Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Not as bad as you do. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Photoshop User TV. What kind of episode is it? It is a prehensile episode. For those of you who didn't, who did join us last time, it was a vestigial episode, so I said this episode should be a prehensile. And uh, these guys didn't know what that word is, so uh, no. if you don't know, Google it, prehensile. All right, now that we're past that. <laughs> so, hey, this is the first, this is the second show that we're shooting live today, and it is brought to us by... Dave, who's it brought by? That magazine. This magazine right here. That particular magazine. This is only this one, though. Photoshop Everything User Magazine, National Association of Photoshop Professionals, PhotoshopUser.com. Official publication. Hi. And I am going to lead us off by saying welcome to Corey. Hello. Corey Barker. Yes, after a very exhausting wardrobe change, yes. I'm ready for the next episode. <laughs> You actually Very went good. like wash the shirt and put it back on. <laughs> hey, exactly, I did. Yeah, I'm, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> and then over here, our Canadian friend, Dave Cross. How are you doing, Dave? I am doing very well. Glad to be back two in a row. It's awesome. Two in a row. It's been so it's been so long. It's been a while. I feel like it's, it's been, been at least 20, 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. And I'm Pete Collins, and we're the Photoshop guys. It's it's great to be here. This is episode number two hundred and ninety-nine. Ninety. Crazy. And I've been here for almost none of them. <laughs> No, exactly. You've been but we're seven. about to reach the episode 300, which is going to be a milestone. Now so you, we're, you've been here all the way back to the beginning. Was, actually, and if you want the real story, we were doing an, an audio podcast on audio, Photoshop. Yes, I remember. Yes, Photoshop I do. Radio. That, that, just, that just seems bizarre. And one day I, I went into Scott's imagine office Imagine the said, cursor. You know, there's this new thing called video podcast. Maybe we should try it. And the next, like, three days later, we took my video camera in his office and filmed the first episode <laughs> of Photoshop User TV. How did you do the audio podca oh, podcast, though? It was us. There were three of us. I had a little box at three mics, and we sat in my office and went, so... Imagine you're looking at the layers panel and you had like four layers. Oh, it felt and like, then imagine it felt like it felt like the thirties when the family That's would gather awesome. around and just they're just you're in front of your computer it's, just it's so funny to think about now doing an audio show about the world's most visual software. Yes. Daddy, what does Gaussian blur look like? I still going way fun. back, I still remember when I first bought some Kelby training there were Kelby training, it was KW Media back then. Mm -hmm. But I first bought training VHS, VHS tapes. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Watching <laughs> Photoshop training on VHS tapes mm. is horrifying. <laughs> and I'm so glad we've moved on past yep. that. So Speaking of moving on, what are we moving on to in just a couple weeks? Just a couple weeks. We're going to be in the nation's capital. Washington Photoshop World will be here. Washington, D.C. Yeah. March 24th through the 26th, so 23rd if you're going to pre-cons, mm -hmm. which I do have a pre-con. I'm teaching uh, masking, selections, and nice. stuff, stuff like that. I forgot what my class was coming <laughs> Something with it's masks and selections time. and, <laughs> it's you know, be cool. very cool stuff. If you um, haven't made it a decision to come to Photoshop World, you need to get in and bug your boss right now to go. First yeah. time in Washington, D.C., the teaching is awesome. The networking is incredible. Just That you know, alone is almost worth mm -hmm. it, yeah. Because if you're like us and you're a Photoshop guy, you're kind of set in the corner and everybody else does their stuff and you're kind of left alone. Mm -hmm. To be able to go to a Photoshop world where everybody talks about Photoshop, you learn this great stuff, mm -hmm. the networking alone is And no pickup line is too cheesy at Photoshop world. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do oh, that. And what else we should mention, too, is that at Photoshop World, there's also an expo with a lot of mm -hmm. exhibitors. Even if you can't come to the conference, there is a free pass to the expo. So yes. you can just come just for the expo. Excellent. And even on that show floor, there are a lot of classes going on. Indeed. And not to mention the long list of who's who of phot uh, photographers and Photoshop instructors from around the world that mm -hmm. teach at Photoshop World. It's, I mean, I am still in awe. It's my what, sixth year teaching at Photoshop World, and I'm still blown away when I, when I meet up with guys like Burt Monroy and, and, of course, all our guys there and everybody. It's, it's just so much fun. I can't, I can't stand it. I want to go now. <laughs> Let's do I it. I mean, we have to go, but even if they didn't pay us to go, we'd go. I'd still go. Wait, yeah. you get paid to go? No, not really, but okay. I was told to well, say not, that. Well, not, not, not in the way you think. <laughs> all right. Hey, uh, Corey, yes. how about this for a segue? Corey, you yes, got something for us today. I do. <laughs> I'm going to jump right in. i got a quick little tutorial on uh, brushes. Um, and kind of talking about what we were talking about last week was, you know, using images. Looking at this image here, this is a simple eye stock image, and it's just three bullet holes in metal. And you'd look at this and go, eh, what can I do with that? I don't know. You could probably take it and composite this image into a background or something like that. But then that would be it. You've, all you've got is that image. You'd have to make duplicates of the layer, move it around, things like that. Why not make it a brush and then be able to apply it anytime? So 
I'm going to go inside my image here. Oh, let me turn my wireless tablet here. Make hey, what kind of tablet are you using there, Corey? Yes, this actually is. It's coming on. <laughs> there it is. The Intuos 5. Wireless. It's the small. Love it. They're not showing it. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Wireless. Just came out. Just came Touch. out. If you caught the webcast the other day, we talked about all the great new features, including the wireless dongle, which I have going on here. But I love it. We're big Sorry. proponents on yeah. using the tablet. Of course, the biggest, the biggest selling point, of course, is the touch. Yep. Yeah. So it's got, uh, not only does it have the, the usual pen features you all are familiar with, but also touch integration. So it uses the gestures in your OS. And you can actually program uh, preset gestures to certain functions as well. So really speeds up the, the whole process. And we're big proponents of using the tablet for being mm -hmm. able to do a lot of detailed work. Now, you, of course, you're a big Cintiq guy. Oh, I yeah. love my Cintiq. Yeah. And if I can't use that, I'm going straight to the Intuos 5. Yeah. I carry this one in my bag. So as soon as I leave the Cintiq, uh, I'm using that. It's certainly either or, yeah. A mouse? What is that? <laughs> All right. Um, so back to this. I'm just going to go ahead and take this and desaturate it. Let's take the color out because I'm not concerned about the color. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up levels. And just since I know the bullet holes are dark and the areas around them are relatively dark, I'm going to boost the contrast a lot here. But I'm not going to go too far because I still want to get some of that shadowed uh, detail and texture area around here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Now I'm going to fine tune that with a brush. Now I'm going to go get a soft edge brush here. Let's get. Uh, Who used the rubber duck? I was say, please use the rubber duck. Come on. Has <laughs> anyone ever? I want to see somebody work that rubber duck. If there is anyone that has used that in a really legitimate sense, <laughs> I want to know. I'm very curious because I'd be love to know what you use that for. Okay. Fair, uh, soft edge round brush. I'm going to change that to overlay blend mode. The blend mode to the brush now, not the layer, but the um, the brush um, blend mode. And let's set it to a foreground to white. And this will allow me to just kind of fine tune this area around here. Notice I don't want to get rid of those little gray areas completely. But I just want to kind of close it in and just keep some of that detail in there. But this one over here, I'm not so worried about. To me, it doesn't look like much of a bullet so hole. Like a so, yeah, so bye bye. So now I have two bullet holes here that I can define as brushes. So I'm just going to go ahead and take and draw a selection around this first one. And we'll go under Edit, Define Brush Preset. Don't have time to name it. Draw a selection You're around the busy. next one. <laughs> Again, Define Brush Preset. And now my brushes are defined. Now, if I make a new document here, let's just kind of see what we got. So I'm going to select my brush, uh, brush tool, and it will be the very bottom of my brush area here. There we go. So if I just paint, and if I change my blend mode <laughs> back to normal. So there, so now I'm getting you know the bullet holes. However, they're all the same angle and looking exactly the same. So first thing is I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And let's add some brush properties. So here in the brush options, I'm going to turn on shape dynamics and then vary the size a little bit. Not too much, but just a little bit. But I'm really going to scatter them. And I certainly don't want to use pen pressure right now. OK. And I'll scatter them like crazy. And let's just increase the spacing a little bit here. Now notice their angle is still the same. So if I go back in shape dynamics, I can just go over here and change this angle jitter. I'm just going to go and knock it way up to 100. And now, if I paint. I like get. All right. You know what? Actually, just one second. What you just did there, I think, is a really cool tip, and you do it naturally. Mm -hmm. Is when you're trying a setting, you go over and do a brush stroke, and then undo it and change the setting. Yeah. Because that little preview at the bottom there, while it's somewhat helpful, yeah, it's right. much more helpful to see it on the image. So mm -hmm. I always tell people, do a brush stroke, undo, change the setting. And that way, you can see kind of live. Precisely. A much better example. I thought you were going to say that you have to make the noises. Mm -hmm. No, well that too. That's well, that's, another, that's in the finish once he gets to do the finished one. Another cool tip when I'm experimenting with brushes like this is that I didn't do it this time. But I just I'll normally will create a blank layer. And notice I've got an active selection. I just did a command A, which is a select all the image. And that allows me to go ahead and paint. And I can just hit delete and do, do it again right. until I get that just um, fine tuned hmm. the right way. Now, That's a great idea. Now, if I open up, aha. And now let's go to the shooting range. You ready? I really need sound effects. Yeah. You know. Post, go ahead. <laughs> go, take out the center target. We need 18. They were sentenced for a crime they okay. did not commit. So there's my grouping. See how good of a shot I am. So it's just simple, um, rea realistic elements. You know, whether it's bullet holes or just knots in wood or anything mm -hmm. like that, you can define those as brushes and have them on call at any time, and then apply colors to them and do whatever. But that's a, it's a great uh, thing to have a whole library of brushes. You know, you know oh brushes, yeah, we love know. brushes. Corey and I live and die by brushes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> brushes so. are good. Brush, brush, brush. Dave, you don't use brushes so much. Oh, wait, no, that was never mind. I don't use oh, a hairbrush. Oh, I use Photoshop oh. brushes. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Let us take like that. a quick break. We'll be right back with uh, Pete's quick tip, and Dave's going to have a little something, and we've got maybe some more stuff. So we'll stuff. see you in just a bit. <laughs> Well, we are back and we're going to do some more tips and tutorials and all that good stuff. And to start us off is Pete. Now, let me ask you some, a random question, Pete. Why do you have a dog on your screen? <laughs> well, for those of you who watched the last <laughs> show, you'll notice that I have the same dog up that I had last time. <laughs> Dave let the cat out of the bag, or oh, I the guess dog the out dog of out of the bag, by uh, <laughs> showing that I was prepared for this next tip for y'all for this time. And what it is, I've had somebody ask on the comment section of Photoshop User TV to talk more about gradients because we use gradients all the time, but some people, you forget that some people forget how to use it and, and they'll get stuck using it one way and they'll be frustrated by how the gradients work. I forgot about that. And let's see if, uh, let's say you've got a picture of this dog and you want to place it onto another grassy area or whatever and you want to make sort of a selection you don't want to cut it all the way out but you want to be able to isolate it one of the great ways to do it is to create a layer mask which all i did was i just clicked on my layer mask here and i've gone ahead and put the image up on a layer above a white background and now if i come over to my gradient selection tool what a lot of people do is they choose the black to white gradient and then when they do their mask, they start to take their gradient across here, and it does a good job of doing a fade across. And that's great as long as you're only doing one gradient. But a lot of times you wanna do a couple gradients. If I now come to the other side, and I pull that gradient across because I wanna fade from the left side as well, what happens is it completely erases the right side. And the whole reason why is because your, your mask is dealing with black and white, and when you do a black to white gradient, the black is taking out, it's hiding the image, but the white is then opening up everything else. So you need to make sure if you're using a gradient for masking that you choose the black to transparent. And what that's gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to create that gradient on this side, but now you can pull it from that side and it's gonna allow you to add that. I can even come in here and drag from that side as well. Another thing to remember is wherever you start your gradient, I start here and I pull over to here, that's gonna take, the, the length of your, your line is gonna take it from the very start, it's gonna be completely black on that end all the way to completely transparent on the other side. So if you want to, now we're back, okay. So if I start over here, it's gonna start with it completely black. Everything's gonna be hidden and it's gonna start to fade to completely visible on this side. And so if you want a nice gradual fade, you bring it out farther. If you want it nice and crisp, a, a harder edge gradient, you bring it closer. One of the things that I do, let me just uh, not hide the dog, but one of the things I often will do is I will make it a little smaller, my, my image, if I want a nice smooth transition, and I'll even start my gradient way off the edge of the page so that I can get a very smooth transition. 
And so I don't want to necessarily get, if I do a real short gradient, watch this, it's just gonna pop it right to that edge. And so you need to remember that your gradient is gonna react according to how long, where it starts, where it stops, and also being able to make sure that it's just simply from black to transparent. This also works on the opposite side. Let's say I wanna take and I want to create a border. If I create a new layer, empty layer, and now I start pulling gradient across, I can start to fill in this side, and now I can pull in this side, and I can pull in from that side. If this was uh, black, to, let me switch it over to black and white here, and you'll see as soon as I try to do that and do the exact same thing, it's gonna fill up that whole layer. And so that's one thing that people get confused because the default usually is to be the, the foreground color and the background color. So as soon as you try to do a gradient, it just wipes out the whole thing. I just, I personally habitually just use foreground the transparent. Yeah. And then just use it, the it, other it, ones when I need them. Right, it, it's a good thing to be on that default. But uh, anyway, that's a quick tutorial on how to use a gradient. And uh, hopefully that'll help. What was that? Very good. Hell, oh, we're back. We couldn't see ourselves. Which <laughs> All I saw was a bird on screen. A bird on a <laughs> it black was three back. birds. They, they replaced this with three ViewSonic birds. <laughs> three little birds. <laughs> I, I have Bob Marley weird. in my head all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. Um, let's move on. We have Dave with a cool feature tutorial for us. Dave, what do you have? Well, I'm, for years and years, as long as I've been teaching Photoshop, I'm the first one to admit to people I'm basically lazy, which is mm. part of the reason I like things like smart objects and layer masks, because you can just reuse and redo and change your mind. But I think you can take it a little step further to create almost, and Pete, you kind of alluded to this last show where you mentioned about creating those borders and edges that you can pull in and reuse. And this is the, exactly the kind of idea that, that I like to do. And an example is the lens flare. You know, the lens flare is kind of cool, you can use it, but why not do it in such a way that most of the work is done for you? So if I just added a lens flare directly to this image, the problem would be I'd be restricted in, in some areas, and then if I try to use it again in another photograph, it might not work as well. So what I'm gonna do is make a new document, and I'm gonna refer to my existing one. So there's kind of a little extra tip for you to know that you can make a new document the size of an that existing one. That is a cool one. tip, I think a lot of people and forget. So I'm gonna deliberately make it much bigger. So I'm using this as sort of my starting point, but I'm kind of adding more canvas in effect just by making a much bigger image. I'm gonna fill it with black. And before I do anything else, I'm gonna convert this to a smart object, which basically means that the lens flare filter will be a smart filter. So I do lens flare and I'll just pick whatever style and just kind of for now roughly center it and kind of go, yeah, that looks okay, knowing that all these things are completely editable. And then I would actually save this just as you see it like this, which I happen to have done previously. Really? So Convenient. let's imagine now it's like those cooking shows where they say, and now we take it out of the <laughs> right oven. out of the oven. No, no. <laughs> Forget a little cooking and cherry. Later, it'll look like this. So here's my <laughs> lens flare that I've saved previously, and I drag it into the image, which, because you drag it from mini bridge, it automatically scales it to fit, which is kind of nice. But you could, of course, also decide I want to make it a little bit larger. And then all I would need to do now is change the blend mode to screen, so I have a movable lens flare. So that's kind of nice, but the fact that this has come in as a smart object means if I double click on it, it goes back and says, here's the one I was working on. So here's how I would use this. I'm gonna close this other one I did. So as a simple way to get this whole idea, you tile your windows. So on the left-hand side, you're seeing kind of the finished, what it's gonna look like. On the right-hand side, here's the lens flare. So now I just double click and say, well, let's see if I move this over here and clicked okay. All I have to do is save it, and it's going to update on the other one. Uh -huh. So I can very, oops, not like that. I can very <laughs> easily change it to anything, just try a different setting. You can even change the layer, the lens, the flare type as well. Right, exactly, yeah, exactly. Right. That's actually a good point. Let's do that, just as she can see. So I can say I want to try this other weirdo lens flare. As soon as I save it, it's going to update on the mm. other one. And this concept can be applied to all kinds of things. So here's other ones that I've done where I have like a painted edge, kind of like we talked about last time. So I could drag that in, it's a little too small, but I can enlarge it, that's okay, because, sorry, am I boring you? Yes. <laughs> I'll go faster, so, so the pain will be over sooner. <laughs> um, so I drag it over and now it's in there, I could use it in a couple of ways. The simplest way probably would be to select all and copy it, and then come back to this other layer, add a mask, and then to be able to paste on the mask, I have to option or alt click on it, and then I can 
paste the mask on there. Mm. But even there, so I get this nice edge effect, but if you're unsure of what you want, if I go back a couple steps before I pasted, this is also still a smart object, so I could go back in and repaint the edges or reapply a sure. filter. So the, the advantage to me is by doing it this way is you can make something, because you don't want every edge to look exactly the same. No. So if you do it in a way that when you pull it in, it comes in with some smartness, whether it's a smart filter or a mask or something you can edit, means you're not just creating everything the same, but you're cutting out a lot of the work because mm -hmm. you're saying, I'm going to use this same thing. So let me show you one other last example, which frankly in this case doesn't work quite as well, but it gets the point is here's a, a wood texture that I created mm. and I saved it and you'll see it's coming in kind of semi see-through already and that's because in the original one that I saved as a smart object I used blend if sliders mm -hmm. so I already took out some of the texture and saved it that way so as soon as I bring it in it already has that applied and now I can try different blend modes or whatever I want to create a particular effect. Nice. So instead of bringing something in and going, oh wait, I usually use the blend mm -hmm. if sliders, just save it that way. Yeah. So I end up with this little folder of these little kind of finishing touches that are already have something done, whether you've got a smart filter or blend if sliders or some combination that you just drag them in, tweak them slightly. So again, they look different, yes. they're all the same, but you're not starting from scratch every time. You have that bank of mm -hmm. you know go-to effects. You know it's like the texture fol folder. And yeah, exactly. You have that go-to folder of uh, oh, I need a quick uh, cool cool factor. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. So. Well, I hope a lot of you out there are like me when I sit here and watch Dave. I go tile. Dang, I forgot about tile. <laughs> I need to use tile. It's like every time he does a tutorial, I get about three things I know I should be doing, and he's using them. And it just you're not lazy. You're just efficient. You're smart in how you you. Which may be true, but it's all motivated by my Oh, well, uh, hey, <laughs> self-preservation, I like How it. How can I do everything I can to not do as much as I can? Yes, quickly. So let's take a break. <laughs> all right. We'll uh, that for a while. Going to be right back with some contests, giveaways, and all that kind of cool stuff. Stay with us. We'll see you in just a moment. Hi everybody, I'm David Zeiser. Hey, we have one great Tubby training video coming your way, and this time it's going to be on couples. What I'm trying to bring to this video is find the great locations to get some great photographs of your couples, how you can put great lighting on your couples, and then also how you can get great expressions. I can guarantee that you're going to love it. Join me on this Tubby training video, Shooting Couples. My name's Dave Black. We're working with sports action using speed lights. We started out track and field with a sprinter coming out of the starting blocks. Then we got some great feature shots of baseball from a variety of angles. Had beautiful twilight sky behind him, and then we'd like re-illuminate him with a speed light setup. We moved on to faster action with motocross, where we had three great professional motocross riders for us on a super course. We used a combination of cross light with the sunshine and then the speed lights coming in to make a real dynamic look. It's exciting. You'll learn a lot. So come to KelbyTraining.com and watch my sports action with speed lights video. We'll see you there. And we're back. Hey, thanks for sticking with us. Guys, this is March 6th. We're shooting live today. And if you're with us live right now in almost 54 minutes or so, we're going to have a brand new live webcast with Scott Kelby and Matt Koskowski. Covering. Covering Lightroom 4. Lightroom 4 ships today, and they're going to do a whole webcast on it. This is a new book by Scott Kelby. It will be out almost instantaneously as we speak. I don't know when it's coming out. It's coming out shortly, but this is going to be an mm -hmm. awesome book. He is the number one seller of Lightroom tips. I need to go over here. Love it. So, uh, Y'all make sure to check this out. You've already put off enough work for today. Go ahead and uh, <laughs> skip a little bit more and watch Scott and Matt in just a few minutes. And yeah, uh, hey, we've right got into lunch hour, so yeah, and and we've got a few things to give away here. We do uh, for our for our giveaway today. We're going to give away 
Sketching Light. It's the an illustrated tour of the possibilities of Flash by Joe McNally. Joe McNally. Mm -hmm. We all know Joe. We love Joe. He's a great guy. Fantastic photographer, and he's done fantastic books, by the way. He know? does. He's also yeah. a lot of people don't realize that before he decided to become a photographer, he actually went to school in journalism. So he's yeah. one of the oh, few yeah. photographers that actually has a real knack for, real, yeah. for writing in a very interesting. But remark. And I always tell people, I said, you know, there's 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 great photographers that you will shoot and then take something into Lightroom or Photoshop and then put the finishing, finishing touches on it. Joe manages all that in the camera. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and with light, when you give him a set of lights and a camera, <laughs> he'll do what take me, will take me at least three hours in Photoshop, so. <laughs> uh, in addition to that, we have, of course, have a pass to Photoshop World in mm, DC. You can join World. all of us, as well as Scott, Matt, and, Everett and the whole gang in DC. We'll provide you with a pass to the conference, but not a flight or a hotel. You'll have to figure that out all on your own. So, what will they have to do to win such a? Th well, they will have to go to kelbytv.com, mm -hmm to Photoshop User TV, lbtv.com yeah. slash Photoshop User TV, yeah. and you'll see what, this is where all the shows are, of course, but there's also a comment place, you can see on the screen right there. Right there here? There it is on Corey's Scroll machine. Scroll right down. And you'll see there's a place where you can add comments, and leave any comment at all, it doesn't really matter. I mean, obviously, we, as I said before, we'd like if you give some suggestions or comments, whatever, but really it's just, I would love to win. Your also favorite works. cookie recipe, <laughs> anything like that. And but, someone um, else other than us randomly chooses someone to win, and that person will get the book and the Photoshop World Pass. But as Pete did mention in the last episode, yep. we do in fact read those comments. We mm -hmm. look at requests, see what people want to see. So uh, don't just uh, write anything silly. If you really are interested in seeing something, by all means, write it in, and we will see what we can do. So. And, and we, we may try to do the, the tip here, or it may show up on the uh, NAP website, mm -hmm. photoshopuser.com. So, Absolutely, uh, yeah. We, we don't limit it to just Photoshop TV. If it's good enough for us to do elsewhere, then we'll certainly do that. So. Yeah, so please feel free to send in those comments. We, we need them. We get, you know, we sit around and stare at each other and go, what am I going to do for this week? And, <laughs> and, and we, we love to do things that are going to help you all directly. And if we use your tip, you get three free fortune cookies. <laughs> all right. So we waiting to hear what they were going <laughs> to say. Oh, yeah, I was waiting. They're going to get the acknowledgement that we thank them so much for their input. Yes. Well, we might even go so far as to mention your name on the show. <laughs> so, producer is uh, miming. She said she wanted to remind us that we're going to have the 300th episode oh, yeah. coming yes. up. Yes, the 100th. And which will be our season finale this for where we're going on break uh, but after episode 300. We've made it to 300. I know, it's crazy. That's wild. Believe. 300. So definitely most, make sure you check most, that out. Most Emmy-winning TV shows haven't had three epi 300 <laughs> episodes. That's that's bizarre. I don't understand that. All right. So that seems to be the secret is be really bad and don't win awards, <laughs> and then you can go on forever. <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right, so be sure to tune in for the Lightroom live show a little bit later. We thank you guys for tuning in today. Thank you to Pete Collins. Yes. And Mr. Dave Cross. Goodbye. And we will see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>